Hi guys, welcome to the Grey Escape. This week we're all going to say yeah, baby, in honour of our gorgeous guest, star of the original Austin Powers movie. She played opposite Mike Myers as the ingeniously named character, a lot of vagina. Fabiana Udenio is going to be right here, right with us. I am so excited because she's my friend too. So this is, oh, I'm going to tell you all about it right after this. Fabiana and I met many years ago as neighbours at the infamous Oakwood Apartments in Los Angeles, which was known at the time for housing child actors, folks like Jennifer Love Hewitt, Kirsten Dunst, Megan Fox, Hilary Duff, Shia LaBeouf, and truly an endless list of hopefuls would flood every pilot season, that's around January through March, to the Oakwood Apartments with their families where they would all hope to be the next Macaulay Culkin, basically. So although I wasn't a child at this point, I was still kind of young and coming to LA was a very scary thing for me. I only knew Los Angeles from what I saw on TV and in the movies and basically I thought it was clearly a horribly dangerous place to live. And I figured, you know, if kids can live in this apartment complex, it must be pretty safe. While I'm speaking about the Oakwood Apartments, I want to extend a very special shout out to my, I call her my second mom, my American mom, Rosie Forty, who, ah, I know it's going to make me cry. So the heads up, this is totally going to make me cry. Rosie was the activities director at the Oakwood Apartments when I met her in Toluca Hills location, because there's tons of Oakwoods. And she would oversee the onslaught of the families and kids and people like me every year. And Rosie helped me. She helped everybody. But I can only tell you how she helped me in every way. Rosie would give me little jobs to do. She'd be able to give you a little bit of money. Maybe you would deliver flyers for her. Or in my case, I could paint always. So I would spray paint kids' faces at parties. And she had me paint and design sets for little kids productions and I even sewed a bunch of costumes one time little flappers outfits for some kids to do a flappers show so she would do all of this so that I could earn a little bit of money to put gas in the tank and go off to my auditions and pay my way and you look back on your life and you see people in your life who were very significant in the story of how your life has played out. And there's only a handful in my life, maybe there's only a handful in your life. Rosie is able to fully take the title. She can have the billboard of significant person in my life coming to America. And her health took a little turn for the worse a couple of years back. And she's doing great. And I'll tell you why she's doing great, because she has an amazing attitude and she's living proof that what you think about and your approach and your attitude far outweighs what you might be told in a clinical study or a lab report. So I just want to take the opportunity to say a big, from my heart, thank you to Rose Forty. And I apologize for getting emotional, but you know what? That's what happens when you care. You get emotional. So, and I care. Now, I won't be crying in a minute because now it's time to talk about Fabiana (laughs) and all the fun we had at the Oakwood Apartments. So here I am. I'm at the Oakwood Apartments and I meet this actress and she's beautiful and she's gorgeous, Italian accent, and we're kind of a similar age and we start hanging out. And that's all I'm going to say. Get your napkin, because this is going to get juicy from the... (laughs) I think that should be my catchphrase. Get your napkin, because this is going to get juicy from the iconic movie Summer School. Austin Powers, most recently Jane the Virgin, and just about every sitcom you can mention, the extremely charming and talented Fabiana Udenio.
Hello, Fabiana. Hi. Yeah. We're going to pretend we don't know each other. We just met. <laughs> we we don't have to pretend we don't know each other. We can we can totally. Uh, we can say the whole thing. Yeah, we can say the whole thing. We knew each other a long time ago. Well, we don't say the whole thing, though, right? <laughs> a long time, kind of like a few years. Let's keep it vague. Um, I don't know. I'm it's more, more than for a going few. for the truth. <laughs> no. I think it was more like it started with the with the numbers nineteen. <laughs> Okay. 1998. Oh, no, 1996. I, I take the fifth. Okay. <laughs> well, you were super young. The, there you go. Yes, you like thank you. When I met you. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, when I met you, you were kind of at a pinnacle of a celebrity. You'd just come off of Austin Powers. Uh, actually, think. yeah, when I met you, I hadn't done it. But then uh, when we were, you know, seeing each other... As friends, of course, yes. this is yes. strange. Although we yeah. can start a rumor and it might <laughs> help can, ratings. Right. So Fabiana and so I were seeing we were each seeing other. when we were seeing each other, yeah. I hadn't, uh, you, you actually were seeing me before the pinnacle that okay. you talked about. Okay. So you're the, you were a true friend. Yeah, I knew you the before. Before, <laughs> I'm kidding. No. And then when we were, um, when we were friends, then I, and then I did Austin Powers. Uh, and then, because Austin Powers came out in 98, right? Okay. Or 97, so... So, yes. So if it's, it was before I shot it. What was that process like? I mean, did you have to do a million auditions for that? Very interesting. No, it's one of the easiest, smoothest uh, jobs I ever got. Um, the, the funny thing, and I always tell the story, is getting the call from the agents um, saying, okay, you have an audition tomorrow. It's for the role of a lot of vagina. And I go, excuse me? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a comedy. I... I Hope so, <laughs> that it's a comedy. And then it's with Mike Myers. Are we sure this is legit? Yes, okay. Then uh, we send you the script and we'll send you. And so I got the audition and I said, why not? <laughs> and um, it was just one call or maybe one call back. They put me on tape and that was it. And I got the part. Wow. Um, one call back. Yeah. Wow. If, if, on tape. So, or maybe just that one audition on tape and I got, it, it was either only one or two. I don't even remember if it was two. It was one good audition on tape with the casting director for the producers and everybody. And, and um, yes, it was one of those things that just happened. Of course, the first one, he didn't have the whole pool of actors wanting to do it because it was the first one so mm. nobody knew what it was going to be mm. and that it was going to be such a hit and so um i'm sure for the second one he had whoever he wanted to mm. play any kind of role he wanted so but for me as far as i'm concerned it was an easy easy relatively speaking easy job to get it and feels like, like you are diminishing yourself by uh, saying, right. oh, uh, I, I uh, only uh, got it because it wasn't known to be famous yet. You know? Or because I was so amazing <laughs> and so perfect and so funny that they had to go for me. Let's put it that way. But no, it was actually not. There are some things that, you know, they keep calling you or they are not deciding between two people. Right. And they keep calling. That wasn't the case for, yeah. for that project, which is nice. And so was it the first time that you met Mike Myers was on set? Yes, I had met uh, Jay Roach. He was great. He he met me. We had uh, we talked about the character beforehand, before the the shooting and uh, the vision that he had, and so he, that was very very nice. Um, and but I had not met Mike Myers before. No, we met at the re read through um, of the script. Wow. Yes. What was that like? A table read. Yes. Okay. The table read, and then. Um, and then on the set. So, which was interesting because I had not met him before. So it was very interesting because even uh, reading the script, it was very hard to get a feel for what really the vision of the project was, which was ev all around from the costumes, the music, the, the character itself. Until you saw him transform, you didn't really know how funny it was going to be. It was, it was hard to, 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 to read the written page and imagine mm -hmm. um, the, the, the thought process, the character, everything the, you know, behind it. And it was really great to see it come to life with the costumes and, and the wardrobe and the, and, and the teeth, and the hair. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And when you guys did the table read, does everybody give their full performance at a table read? Like that? No, no. They, okay. they, it, it was 
and 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 also because yeah no 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 I couldn't get a feeling I couldn't understand no okay so mm. Mike Myers wasn't full on Austin Powers at the table read no okay that's no. interesting no okay so so it must have been quite the shock then on set yes <laughs> yes it was and also because he's he's a quite shy like many comedians I hear uh, he's quite shy in real life so the table mm. was mostly just to meet and and. Um, to, I think the first scenes we shot were the ones in the hotel room with the, when I see him sitting down and um, he's sitting down in my apartment. And um, yes, it was hard to keep a straight face. And it was, it was, it, he was so different than, than, than what I had seen that it was very, very interesting. It was a great experience. Yes. And did, did a lot of people crack up on set? Did you crack up? Uh, in the tub, I did, uh, because um, I think they did my my side first, Well, and and then they did his, and th- there was so much improv going on. Also, in the scenes when he was playing um, the uh, the alter ego. Dr. Evil? Dr. Evil, yes. And uh, th- those scenes, I mean, it was, there was so much ad lib, so much going on that it was hard to, to keep a straight face. And one-on-one it was for me. Um, and, uh, and it was, that was the challenge was to keep up with him and to react in a proper way and, and to, you know, keep the ball going. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the fun part, uh, and to be the straight person, but to be kind of over the top, not so much or, you know, and I think Jay was, uh, Jay Roach was, was, uh, masterful in that, in, in giving the, the setup for the vision that he had of this character and making it real and then, you know, and then going for the comedy, but you don't go for the comedy right away. And so, yes, so I, had, I was in good hands, let's, let's say. It's and so you had to improvise along then when Mike Myers would start to improvise. You'd have to go along with that. You had to go along with yeah. that. Uh, now it's hard to remember what, how much it stayed and, and you had to go along with that. And um, yes. Had you done improv before? A little, a little, uh, doing sitcoms or working in comedy before, um, not per se, not on stage, but just in acting classes. Um, so. Had you done comedy training? Because you've done I a ton done of comedy. comedy training. Not per se, not per se. You know, um, just being among writers and doing sitcoms and, and maybe something other than, you know, starting with summer school, Carl mm-hmm. Reiner and looking at comedy, but not so acting classes, thinking comedy, but not proper comedy training per se. I have not. That's interesting, isn't uh, it? So you're clearly, I mean, you're obviously were a natural so early on. I mean, you've done so I many I've done sitcoms. a lot of comedy. Yes, yes. And uh, I think that has helped a lot to be and and to think funny i think the sitcoms helped there is so much writing you're um sitting around with writers and they change it mm-hmm. the lines day by day it's m- most like being on stage so right. uh, something doesn't work they change it a little bit they mm. tweak it they change mm. to, in order to make it funny and then you're in, li- in in front of a live audience and really sitcoms are one of my loves i mean i love doing sitcoms okay. and, and so i think that probably uh, the style, different styles with different sitcoms, different producers or writers uh, that you learn how to, um, uh, the rhythm of comedy or the, you know, and you steal from the masters. Right. What, what was, was Carl Reiner the writer of Summer School? No. Uh, Jeff Franklin was okay. the writer of Summer School. He also then went on to do uh, Full House. Okay. And Carl Reiner directed it. Okay. And... How is that being, I mean, you know, you hear these names that are so legendary in the world of comedy. I mean, what are these guys doing that makes them legends? How is he directing you that's different than other directors where you go, wow, this guy's amazing? I think what he did, and it was my first American movie, um, I was so green here. I think uh, the, 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 the strongest feeling that I can remember is that this relaxed set, Mm. where you felt safe mm. to to explore to to to, to be silly to mm. to fun and creating a fun atmosphere there were a bunch of kids he was directing kids i mean we were 20 but um and uh so that and then none of us was real comedian but the the two kids the chainsaw and uh, dave and chainsaw they were very funny and 
again, creating the atmosphere where you're, you feel safe, you feel liked, you feel secure and confident. And so you can explore a little bit and be silly and be, you know, make mistakes and nobody's going to judge you or you're not going to f- feel ridiculous and creating that atmosphere mm. so you can go over the top and then go down and uh, of creativity that then feeds whatever, you know, a vision of, and then, and then feeds the comedy. And um, so what would uh, Carl Reiner, what are some things you could think he might do to allow, f- to create that feeling on set? Because that's pretty specific. You know, what was he doing? He was playful. He would tell jokes. He would tell stories. Mm. He was uh, making you feel safe and calm. Um, talking about uh, now you can let it go with your character. You can do mm. whatever you want. And and uh, and then, you know, there would be times he would direct. Or, you know, we were all in the classroom and uh, uh, he would give you the time also to, you never felt rushed or confidence. He would give you the confidence. Mm. Yes. That's nice. It was very, he was like, and, and to me, it's like the father figure, the yeah. perfect father figure for a set. And there were so many kids he was directing that, uh, and then he would tell stories of his past legend mentioning all these really legendary names and we would all be listening. And some uh. of those names I, I didn't quite know how important they were because I hadn't been in in the country for that long. And then I realized, oh my God, he was talking about this. He was talking about that. So um, who were his names he was dropping that were his comedy icons? Right, I forget. Right, they were, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like probably people, I guess, from just the earlier era of comedy. Because he's in his 90s now, Carl Reiner. And And he's still working. Unbelievable. Yeah, Yeah, he's still working. And of wow. course, he would talk about his son, like, oh, my son is doing this. <laughs> my son, and of course, his son is Rob Ryder, yeah. like another legend, right? And I, did, I said, oh, my God, I remember going to see the movie that he had done, just Rob Reiner, the one with the children with the dead body. What was that movie? Oh, gosh. Uh, children and a dead body, I can't, I'm uh, not sure. Oh, a beautiful movie. <laughs> um, one of the first movies. I mean, probably. sounds destined for comedy, children and a dead body. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, I'm sounding good. Or a horror movie, either way, <laughs> you were kind of winning. Uh, um, hmm. They were all friends, uh, childhood friends. Um, were you Stand m- By Me? Oh, oh, Stand By Me? Stand By Me? That's, uh, I remember, God, I interviewed Will Wheaton when he was on Stand By Me. They were young, right? Yeah, they were super young, those guys. So which guy was on that? How have we gone to Carl, from Carl Reiner to Stan To Rob Reiner. Reiner. To because, Rob Reiner. Yes. Okay, okay. Because I think so Carl he, Reiner he was direct men- it? Did, oh, Rob Reiner, what was... Directed Stand By Me? He directed it, wrong okay. about that? Oh, I, I don't this. have my phone. It's like a board game. <laughs> We're, we've created a board game <laughs> I was, where you link well, people Yes, yes, it's movies. been a long career. I've been doing this since I was 13, so my, <laughs> my references get mixed up. You know, it's been a while since I haven't thought and, about and that. And you're like foreign... Yeah, I have foreign. the excuse. Yes, I speak four, four languages. I, yes. See, I get the names of the different countries mixed yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, that's enough. Who knows, maybe some Italian directed, directed Stand By Me and yeah. I'm making a mistake now. Which, by the way, I always thought you were Italian and then I read you're born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I was born there. So you're Argentinian? Is that... Is By it? default, yes. I was there till I was six, hmm. and then I moved back to Italy. Okay, I was so yes, I am. Yeah, well, I'm. I grew up in Italy, but Argentina is also there. Okay, my I have still family there, um, on my father's side. My grandfather passed away, but he lived there. I have uh, an uncle. I have a, a cousin actually. That's a director. He just did a couple of movies. One was really great. That he came to Los Angeles with it to oh. screen it. It was called The Film Critic. It was, uh, it's a um, independent, very neat movie that he shot in Argentina. So I was proud. He has my same last name. So it's interesting. Okay. Yes. I went All to see right. that movie. So, yeah. Uh, what are your other two languages that you speak? Italian and, and I guess English and then Spanish very well Spanish. because being born there and then Spanish is fluent like the Italian okay. and then French. On French as well. And I studied German for five years. Okay, but, that's enough. Right? That's enough, Fabiana. But it's a little funny because I, I, I was in Italy on vacation and I saw all my high school friends who, who uh, studied German for five years like I did. It was a school of languages. And they all remember it. And I don't remember one word other than 
It's I actually raining. studied German yes, too. Yes, do you oh speak a little bit? No, I mean, I know uh, Ich bin verheiratet because uh, I was married at the time and living on a base in Baden-Baden. I was a DJ for the Canadian forces and I took it upon myself to learn German. But really, I just would uh, use it to return items to stores. I remember <laughs> that was the most sentences I could string together was this lipstick was broken when I bought it. You, you know, know what I remember? I remember to say, it's raining. Okay. Es regnet. Okay. And suddenly, plötzlich. Oh, suddenly. Now that's useful. Right? <laughs> so that's the way my memory works. <laughs> Don't ask me how. Plötzlich. And then I remember I'm hungry. Ich oh, that's habe hunger. See, that's a good one. Yeah. Plötzlich, I'm hungry. Right. So, yeah, plötzlich, ich habe hunger. So, so that's we, good. We assess I'll you never have s- a disorder because you're suddenly <laughs> struck with hunger. <laughs> While right. it rains. So I'm like a romantic, <laughs> yeah, right. hungry person. I mean, that's the, that's the premise for your show, right? Yeah, there. right. It rains. <laughs> suddenly hungry. <laughs> so Every rains. actress in LA will watch this show. <laughs> suddenly hungry. Right. right. Um, so you mentioned how sitcoms are your love. How would you describe the difference between being on a movie, because you've done these great comedy, legendary comedy movies like Austin Powers, and then being on sitcoms? How is, how is it for you as an actress? The stage has more of an a impact on, on, on a sitcom. So there is that kind of a feeling of the rehearsal, five, four days rehearsal, oh, five day rehearsal, and then you actually shoot it. So that, that's a nice thing. And in a movie, everything is slower and more so... Uh, I think the stage background that I have sort of helps with the sitcom. The desire to be in front of a live audience mm. um, feeds you more. Feeds feeds you more, and and then the fil- film is more knowing the camera, knowing editing, knowing um, that aspect. Uh, so that's a difference. I mean, it's the same difference between stage and film. Mm. Um, there is a little bit of stage in the sitcom uh, right. world. And that's what uh, makes it interesting. So when you're in a movie, do you actually change your technique around of acting? Like, do you be more still and mindful of your movements and more loose when you do a sitcom because it's more like a play? You're or? supposed to. I'm not sure that I'm the best. I think part of uh, the skill of being an actor is to kind of forget and okay. to let hopefully a director tell you. But yes, we, it's nice to be aware of the size of the of the shot of if it's yes so you close up or close a wide up shot. Or, yeah so you you know to you, to uh modify your expression for and you kind of do it naturally after a while you want to keep it contained okay. and subtle if it's a close up and then you let it all out for the master mm. and um you if it's over the shoulder you sort of careful that you don't block the other actor. Right. So they're all the, the technique uh, that you're supposed to be mindful of when you're doing a film. Yeah. And that can hinder the performance. Yeah, it's uh, a lot to remember. Yes. And marks on the floor. When you're in, in these things, you have the taped marks on the floor. Oh, yes. And of course, there are the actors that they don't care and they think that the performance comes first. And mm. if there's something wrong, they're supposed to tell them. And that's also another technique. But... But, you know, um, it, it is nice to be aware of the different uh, mediums and how you want to. And for the stage, for a sitcom, yeah. The, the, in a sitcom, yes, you do have the audience, but you're also careful not to be too conscious of that audience that may be just a specific audience for one day and not react too much. So mm. uh, the joke could still be very funny and it still could work, but that day they weren't as reactive right. as you would want and you don't to let it get to you okay. and so yeah um, or it could be a clunker right i mean <laughs> right? it could be i, I guess right. that's what happens because then they rewrite it on yes the spot. yes oh yeah 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 yes. yeah yes yeah. so yeah. then you got that to deal with you have a new line yes that you got to remember yes and so not to let it affect you and it's all about it, it's a lot about the writing and the um in sitcoms and and uh that's actually the most the the fun part, how mm. creative and fast the writers can change. Mm. And, and um, you know, you're a writer. Uh, I, I love writing and it's not my thing, but I certainly respect it because it's one of the aspects that I, that I do rely upon. And when the writing is good, um, there, you can do no wrong. Mm. I mean, Jane the Virgin, the writing, I find it, I'm such a fan of that show that okay. I'm doing now. Yeah. Just that, the writing and the way they can explore 
anything from the from the parody to the uh, self irony to then being very real and just to get to that range it's all in the writer's hand and to m- make those extreme situations sound believable mm. and that you can get involved in in, in the soap opera world and that the, these ex- the situations of life that well we've had an interesting life so we can sort of connect a little bit more but they're extreme and it's in the writing uh, the, the the power of the writing to uh, to make it believable to make characters interesting to uh, match them with the right actors so. you're so passionate about the writing i'm surprised you haven't gone into it more yourself and written right stuff. it's yeah, one of those you're things super that, passionate about it yeah perhaps it's one of those things that i think it, uh, the arc should be there and it's not and i recognize it's not my thing and um maybe it's not my passion well it's not my passion for myself mm. but uh, i appreciate it yeah, when that's I read nice. It. Yeah, like like how people appreciate art, you really recognize and acknowledge and appreciate the writing. Perhaps, yeah, and I, which and is I great. think it's not really my thing. I'm, you know, I, it, but maybe it's it's something that I should explore. Maybe eventually I will. But but uh, yes. Well, let's face it. Nothing happens Unless without the writing. Nothing. nothing is happening. Nobody has a job if there is not a writer who's written something. Right. You know, for film and television. Um, when you audition for film and TV, do you change that, how you would audition? You know, do you, do you restrain your performance more for a movie audition? You know? Um, yes. Again, then I try to be... depend. Yes, if it's on tape, you want to think about more. And lately, it's so much of it, it's on tape. So you want to be more aware that you're actually being put on tape so mm. that they can see you. If it's a room full of people, then... Um, you can be a bit more theatrical. Or not, or just not be so concerned about how you're going to look on tape. Oh, right, right. And then again, for audition, I think the most important thing is t- t- for me, and perhaps I'm, I hope I'm right, is to really feel it and not to be so self-conscious of every single detail because then you're going to lose the heart, um, yeah. the spontaneity. If you're too concerned, how am I going to look on this tape with this kind of lighting? Um, mm. And uh, how silly is it going to look, whatever I do? So audition is hard because you also want to make it, you don't want to do a full out thing that that's the best you can do. Mm. You want to make him feel that there's there is more to explore. And because there is, you're just auditioning. So you don't huh. want to give. Um, but that's really interesting that you say that. Because, I mean, I would think you would want to, do the very best so that they've seen what you can do. I mean, so that's an interesting theory. Yes. Well, I want, I don't want to give my absolute best, but then. Well, the, you, you, it's funny that you, you, do, you do try to give the absolute best, but you want to make him feel that perhaps you don't know the whole thing by heart. Mm. You're looking at the paper a little bit. Uh, you, you, you didn't spend 24 hours thinking nothing yeah, about that. So yeah. you want to make him think that, yes, you're just auditioning here, yeah, and that, and that you're also. Fle- it also, it's 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 good to keep in mind that you you want to be flexible. You may be making a very good choice, and but it's not the choice that they want, right. and they may uh, throw something out there to you, and um, a direction or something, and then you want to be able to follow that, right. uh, not shake everything off, forgetting what you've worked on, keeping right. some of what you came in with, and and sort of taking another direction and that takes a little bit of keeping your options open thinking about uh, ha- having a, 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 some degree of spontaneity or um in the moment sort mm. of and and not so much because maybe you don't have the right actor or some casting director that is bored is reading with you right. or um or not or or, or some person that may not be connecting with you the way another actor would. So there are all those variables in an audition that I can't say I work really hard when I audition because I I can't say that I go there, oh, I'm going to be great and just be in the moment. Uh, But you want to give a little bit of that impression, I think, that Mm. you're... It makes sense. It's logical to me that you want to seem that you're not fully off book. I remember, do you remember our mutual friend, Natasha? Yeah. Yes. So she taught me something. Um, she was really sweet a couple of times when I would have auditions 
she, she gave me a couple of tips and she said for one to type out your sides so they're all on one page so that you're not shuffling your papers around. And I thought that was a really good, because then you just got the one page to hold. You don't have to shuffle papers. Mm. So she told me that. Hmm. You may disagree with this. It, go, it could go both ways. Mm. It could, why are you afraid of shuffling papers? You're auditioning. I mean, some other uh, acting director would say, no, look at the paper. I mean, you, you're auditioning. Mm. You're not going there with a finished product that they go, okay, mm. too down pat, too rehearsed. But then again, I understand that it's hard and, and if, if you're nervous, you're shuffling. You, but you can go with that. I mean, you've done improv. Part of the, uh, nobody expects you to be perfect. So if right. you drop the paper, you pick it up and right. you stay in character and you, you know, you don't, they see, oh my God, this actor is really in, in it's, character. It's life. And, yes. It's like if you're eating something, you're going to get dirty. And mm. okay, what do you do? And we saw on film, you wipe yourself. Mm. Um you know, there are some actors that don't give me anything that will spill or it's hard to eat. And it's, I understand it's not easy to eat on camera, but it's something that, that it's a good acting, a good thing they teach you in school to eat and to, to be real mm. and to sort of work with the realities of life that could, it, it, it I don't know, there is never one way to do something. There are, I've always been a believer of uh, exploring different ways of uh, l- achieving the same result, the best, the best result, not the same result, the best result for you. And it's true, there are different, different ways. And especially in acting, which is such an intangible, so many things go into, even your personal life, what you've gone through of in course, your personal yeah. life, you bring into mm-hmm. your work. And the more of a full life you've had, the more I think you can be a better actor. I was just reading something from a casting director, as a friend of mine said, how important it is to to live a full life in order to be a good actor. Yeah. And how often do we get so focused, especially, um, I did, at least in my early years, on, on being just a great, don't do, don't do this, don't do that, because you have to look good, because you have to be disciplined, because you have to work out, because you have to know your script because you have to sleep well and you have to be ready for your audition that you forget to then experience life yeah and then you go there and you're a little bit too uptight maybe Mm. um and how how confident i have now uh that i have a that i have to have a full life i'm a mother and Mm -hmm. so you can't it can't all be about acting and uh putting it in perspective because i have to helps me, I think, be a more confident actor. Mm. I uh, was going to ask you about, I mean, you're still this beautiful woman, but when I met you, you, your career was really hinging not only on your talent, but you were like this, you were the hot girl in the shows with the hot, sexy outfits. And how did it feel to become a mom? Like, did you feel less authentic when you would go out I mean, not that your physical appearance changed, but did you just feel like, oh, I feel more homey now? And I want, did you want to play mums when you became a mum? Or were you still comfortable being? Again, it gave me that that range, you know, it gave Mm. me that range. And uh, uh, I still like to look good and to, to, you know, to, but it, it does give you that range of life. And uh, you know, the, looking good, I put it into the category of, okay, keeping your body healthy and, mm. and uh, working out and just, just the whole package that, that you package yourself to be the best, you know. Mm. And uh, I've, I've played a variety of roles and also s- s- dramatic roles, but obviously, of course, in the States, in the United States, it was hinging, like you said, about being attractive, mm. on being attractive. And... Uh, I didn't take that as a as a negative thing. It's it's just keeping yourself attractive is keeping yourself healthy. Mm. Same thing. Uh, being a mother gives you a broader range. Of, you know what it changed really? It changed the pro- the way you prioritize things and you learn how to prioritize. So if if I have a bad audition one day, it's okay. It's okay. It's not a bad audition. I did what I did. I did the best I could. And, and you shake it off a lot easier than, than I used to when it just puts things in perspective mm. in a healthy way. Because then you're more relaxed and 
you can give uh, better performances. I've, I've g g given, even though perhaps I didn't get the parts, but I've given very good auditions because, you know, you can feel it. You did, you did great. You were confident, you were, you know, and you shake it off. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well, it would also give you a, a whole new slice of pie of emotional depth to yes. deal with yes. being a mom. I remember bumping into, and I hope I get her name right, I think it was Elizabeth Shue, oh. who was married to the guy, and she probably is still married to the guy who did the movie An In Inconvenient Truth. And she had three kids, and I just bumped into her at this event, environmental event. And I said, how did that affect you as an actress? Because, I mean, I don't have kids, so I'm always curious of, like, how does anybody be in this business when there's a whole other person they're responsible for. And right. she's got three kids. And, and I said, how was that? And she said, everything became much better after I had the kids. Her, she said, my career became better after I had children. And I thought that was such an interesting and positive thing to hear. And if I'm, yes, uh, I'm still thinking about your question, which is an interesting question. Do I feel silly if they ask me to be the attractive and it's almost flattering right now. Okay, I'm putting all this makeup on and I'm, you know, I tell my son I'm going to go for an audition. You know, it's what I do and I'm trying to look my best. Yeah. And it's as flattering that I can still or pull it off in a different way, but still be it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's fun. And of course, it's even more fun when you, then there is some depth to the character yeah. or some and you can not care so much about the physical appearance, which is hard in this business, but... You know, because you see yourself and you're well, critical. Yeah. Do you do anything in your life besides being a mom? Have you ever done stuff in your life to counteract that aspect of the business where everything is so superficial about what you look like? I mean, I know you've always been into exercise since I met you. You were really a gym rat when I met you. Like the it, dancing, yeah. Well, yeah. you used to be at the gym all the time, Every exercising, day. yeah, Every day. and swimming. It, it, I, I, it helped. It helped. It helps me uh, my mood too. And I have not done it lately. So I, I tell my friends I'm living off uh, a, a trust. <laughs> you know, like like the benefits of all that work oh, right. that I've done. Well, you look still like a fit. Health trust. Yeah, you so, look like you're working out. Still. I just started. Thank you. The yeah. last two weeks to okay. doing yoga again, but okay. it had been years. So um, and uh, and I say and I say the. The trust is about to run out, so I better okay. do something because you're also healthier when you work out. Um, but the question was... Just what, if you did anything, I mean, some people, for example, they're very spiritual and they meditate and to keep themselves grounded because our industry is so strange in that it is very superficial. It's looking, what do you look like? What do you sound like? True. And you can get a lot of rejection yes. simply based upon what you look like and not because there's anything bad about what you look like, but if they want a blonde and you're a brunette, but you still wanted the part and you don't get it or you're too fat or you're too thin or you're too tall. You know. Right, right. You know what you learn is that uh, there are so many reasons you can... Mm, it's mostly the self-critical part, I think, as actors that, that is uh, damaging. Um, it is true that the industry, that you see everything. It is also true that if you wear with confidence, people won't focus. Look at the, you know, I'm doing Jane the Virgin. Look at Gina Rodriguez. What a great example of an actress that is sh confident uh, and not basing everything on her looks. Mm. Although she's beautiful, of mm -hmm. course, but it's not the beauty that put her on the forefront. Right. And look at that. So we, we take example of those people and of course when you grow up and, and you love acting most of the actors that you look up to are not perfect you know if you're Meryl Streep or anybody you look you look up to you go okay but look at that and then of course there's television and then um the, the demands of 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 the 80 percent of the industry let's put it that way and uh, I've, I think I've always had a very grounded, I started so young in this business that maybe I've gotten my disappointments early on mm. and I've grown to learn how to live with it. Yeah, yeah. And maybe having a good, strong family support Yeah, that gives you the confidence that the business is not going to give yeah. you. Your mom's here right now floating around this apartment. Right? <laughs> yes. Your beautiful comes. mother. <laughs> my beautiful yeah. mom from Italy. Yes. Yeah. So she's hanging out with me. 
still hot in Rome right now. Was it theater that you started in or were you? Yes. Doing, right. Yes. Okay. At 13, right? At 13, wow. I uh, started with one of the most prestigious theater companies in Europe. Mm. Um, the director was Giorgio Streller with the Piccolo Teatro di Milano okay. and with, wow. a, with a rendition of The Tempest. Okay. And I played Miranda. I was very young almost. And then with that rendition, we went to France and we came to the 1984 Olympic Arts Festival with a play in Italian of The Tempest. So we traveled the world with that and, and in Rome and Milan and Florence. And so that was a little bit of my calling card into the, yeah. We, we have these such sort of parallel lives in one way, but yours is so much more impressive and glamorous. When I was 13, I'd also started at theater in England. And while you were playing Miranda in The Tempest, what did you play? I was playing Aladdin when I was 13 How cute. in Birmingham, England. That's hard. <laughs> but I mean, it's just a, a lot. It doesn't sound very glamorous and impressive. Well, I was lucky. I was very lucky to, to, to get picked, you know, I, I, by. A genius of the theater was was lucky, and not that I don't deserve it, but there is a there is a large amount of of coincidence and and luck that 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 is in this business. Well, you must have had a lot of natural talent to to be in deep right off the bat. You know, I mean, your your person of who you are is such a passionate kind of fiery. I always felt you have a fire in you which comes out even of oh, things that you, you care about and stuff and things that you get mad about. I've done a lot of, I've got to confess, I've done a lot of impressions I of you. I saw your impressions. They are very, I mean, I, I, I'm going to tape in one of those and I've, you've done some impressions you did it in front of, of you. Me. Yes, which is hard. I've seen, it's very hard. You're very good at impressions. Uh, that's something else. I've had some friends in Italy too that they do make impressions of me when I was, I have one friend makes impressions um, that I went to high school with, and he still makes the impressions of all our friends in high school and some of me back then, a few years back, right? And it's fun to see. It's fun to see. Well, you used to, the thing that always used to tickle me was that here's this beautiful girl, and then you would get into arguments yes. with me pretty quickly with over you? things. With everybody. I, but you don't now. Like you're very, much more out. mellow. Yeah. But when uh, I first met you, like in 96, and we hung out for a lot for a few years, didn't we, at Oakwood? Yes. And, and uh, I just, that's why I learned the impression, because we'd be talking calmly and then something could come up about anything. That's funny. And, and you'd be like, motherfucker. <gasps> Do I'm, not say that. <laughs> Your son's not right. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Yes, well, but you, you used know, to say that all the time. Really, motherfucker. That comes out. That was an era of you saying that. That comes out if uh, you know. You know, the thing is, like, I not growing up. This is in my defense. In my defense, okay. having not grown up here, there is a less of a self consciousness about the bad words. Mm. So I don't feel so maybe you repeat something you heard because it sounds this is in my defense i may have said i don't it. think you need a defense to no. say that to say that word that's pretty strong curse at. i don't think it's so cursy and so strong these days you know that's funny because i go back to italy and they curse a little bit more my sister okay. and, you know when they drive and i and i it bothers me and I say, this, oh. don't say that and they told me that i have become puritan it's because you're a mom is it yeah or because you've... i've lived here they were their moms I don't know. I, they told me because I've been here in well, the States maybe. for so long that I'm, oh, Puritan and, and uh, what did well, they say? Well, you have changed. The fact you changed. just almost, you recoiled when I said, <laughs> I said the word you used to say. You'd be like, oh, Natalie. Oh, Natalie. Come on. Oh, Natalie. Motherfucker. I always met at someone, hopefully, right? <laughs> you just used to be very, very fiery. But then that makes sense to me because what is acting, it's drumming up emotions. So you're well lived close to the surface. It, it's no yes, wonder I you do. had an amazing, you know, you, you were off and running really early on and, and you've continued to work and sustain a career. So I think I would imagine it's really important to have that well, very accessible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, as you grow older, you learn to be accessible and to, to protect yourself, to sort of let it not be accessible all the time, just to protect your feelings a mm. little bit. If, if your feelings are so um, 
accessible all the time, it may be lead to a very you know, volatile, vulnerable, too vulnerable of a, of a, mm. of a life. Mm-hmm. So you, you learn how to keep him there and to sort of peacefully observe them mm. um, and just to keep him, to keep him and then, you know, ac- access them a little bit with more control. I think that's part of wisdom, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and being a seasoned performer as well. Yes, and you know? living with more wisdom. So let me, they're there, those emotions, but I don't have to, they don't have to overwhelm all of the other ones. Like the movie, the, the, the movie Inside Out, I thought it was brilliant. I ah, went to see it with my son okay. and, and, you know, all these emotions. I, I thought that was a brilliant movie. Maybe I'm the only one. Oh, I, I, has it done well, the movie? I haven't I been hope to so. see it yet. I, I, I don't know. And Cinderella I liked too. So I didn't grow up completely. Oh, that's cute, Cinderella. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I, um, I want to ask you a tiny bit more about Mike Myers because he was one of my comedy idols at Second City oh, really? in Toronto. I, I lived across the street from Second City and was very worshipping of Second City and I studied there and all this stuff. And I wondered, you know, what kind of a guy he was to work with. You said he was shy. I mean, did he go in and out of character on set as Austin Powers or... Uh, no, he would stay. He'd stay in he character. He would stay in character. So if he had a note to tell you, he'd, he'd be that guy. He maybe would go to... The, yes, he would stay in character and then he would probably leave. Uh, he, he was shy after when he took all the makeup off and, the, and then you would say hi or I would meet him with his wife. And I'm shy too. You know, you're my friend and, and I'm outgoing. But if it's somebody that, if, if, if the conversation isn't initiated by someone else, it's mm. hard for me to initiate it. Mm. So there were very, very few, very, very, so it, very small, not it much. It didn't go very it far didn't go with very you and Mike Myers. No, it didn't go very far out of the set. <laughs> okay. Yes, because, you know, I go, yeah, I didn't know what to say. Like, what do you mean you didn't say no? And he's like, well, I didn't say no, I didn't say anything. And I think towards the end, um, yeah, we exchanged them with his wife, but his ex-wife now. But um, yes, it didn't go very far. <laughs> and do, do you keep in touch with people after you've worked with them? I mean, is that part of the actor's thing for you is to keep those connections open? I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at, uh, but I have. I mean, if I, if I meet him again, but people get so busy and then they go on to some something else. No, I I, I have not kept in touch with the actors that I've worked mm. with. But there was, um, funny, We I went to see a play that was sort of a look back at the 80s and a summer school play. Mm-hmm. It was a parody on that. Okay. And, and uh, with some of the summer school actors and there's been a couple of reunions that that, uh, that I saw them again. Um, some person was doing a, a throwback look at uh, summer school and having a screening and so I went there and I saw them again and you, you feel that connection that you felt a long time ago mm. but not keeping touch throughout they have they have to be friends I don't have um people that I've worked with that um I kept in touch only because you know they they, they would have had to be become friends and then we stayed in touch mm. um it would pr- probably be a very good business idea to keep in touch with all the people you work with but Business is not in my blood. You're yes. a performer. Yes, I'm not very good at keeping at keeping the social aspect of that alive. Mm. The social media, the that's not my skill. Um, I have to work. I'm going to work on it a little bit. There's well, always time. I know you have. I know you have some awareness of like industry parties and stuff. Because because we actually, I don't even know if you know this, but I kind of fell out with you for a bit. Because did you know I fell out with you or is this totally private on my side? Because remember, I invited you to the Happening Gallery. The uh, I had a gallery for two years and I invited you. Yes, and I you wanted didn't to come. come. And you wanted to come. But do you remember why you didn't come? No. You went to Jamie Foxx's party. And I always remember you going, oh, Natalie, I mean, come on, it's Jamie Foxx. Oh, on. that's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I know. Hey, how do you know? Did I tell you? you told me. You were like, oh, I'm Natalie, come on. I am Jamie honest. Jamie Foxx. You were very honest. <laughs> See? I have a very <laughs> selective memory. You forget the bad things. And then, but, you know, you have to look at the positive. I was honest. <laughs> well, and you were conscious of industry connections. So that's positive. But okay. you didn't come to my little No, that's no good. Opening. I regret it because probably the party didn't take me in. And I've learned throughout the years that, you know, I mean, I've always been 
by the way, I left Italy because the business there uh, was very much connected to the people you know, and it's it, it, more than here. It, here is more of an industry there. It's more of a um, director's driven. Okay. Or so it is, and also because of the nature of the country, uh, I don't want to speak badly about my country because I love it, but you know, it is very much who you know and how do you get in. Mm. And, and so because that bothered me at a very early age. Mm. So when I got the chance to do a soap opera, come to the United States, I stayed here because it was so... Uh, audition driven. Uh, yeah, things you go and you audition. In mm. when I left Italy, you didn't even even audition wow. for things. You know, like you have a meeting, you're right for the part, and so so that bothered me because uh, the merit, the talent, or the 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 right to do something because the deserve to, to, because you deserve it wasn't quite there, and that bothered me a lot. Mm. So so I do believe I strongly believe in that to the point of forgetting that this is an industry, a business, and marketing and publicity and accounts and it's very important and and uh, sometimes uh, more important than other aspects but I'm a strong believer I do this because I like doing it uh, not really because I'm good at the marketing part or so yes. yeah well, but I'm you, sorry for missing and I'm um, really sorry <laughs> and, well, thank you. and it didn't lead anywhere probably that party but do you remember the party did you get to meet Jamie Fox and chit chat with him you say the, the the what do you what is that saying? Do you say the 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 sinner but not the sin? Something probably like that. Something okay. I'm mixing so languages. You didn't get to chit chat. No, no, we did. We did, I, I probably did meet okay. him. Yes, but it wasn't. Uh, and I think um, I'm not trying to mix up. But there was some girlfriend that probably was pushing for me to go hmm. and and saying, oh, if you don't go with me, I'm just. Well, what to- kind of friend does that? <laughs> What kind of friend pushes you away from another friend? From another That's friend. A there you go. No, friend. I, have, I can't win on this one. I have guilty as charged. That's it. I, I regret it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, thank and, you. And, and, thank and, you. And then, uh, unfortunately, and that's why we didn't talk. I swore you off for a bit. I swore you oh. off for quite a bit. I was like, I'm done with her. If she can't, because I built that gallery with my partner, Jason, and it was I, like I our blood. The two of us, we built it from the inside out. And it was very out. close to In me. Marina Del Rey. It was right. a stone's throw I from know. you without giving away where you live. It's no. a stone's throw. I am. Um, you I could cough an, over the gallery. I do not um, have an excuse. I, so, except for Jamie Foxx is your excuse that he, he was more successful than I me. I was desperately I trying that. to revive my career and said, this is, a, this is my chance. You know, I have a sitter. And, you have a babysitter. And I have a babysitter. And so should I do something that's also good for my career? There must be something, must have been something like that going on. Mm. Um, well, I mean, he's a big one. He's one of the biggest. I'll give you that, you know. It's not like he, But you know. a lot of parties and the parties is just, you know, I, I don't think I was going there thinking, but maybe I was. I, I don't remember what I was thinking. You then could I, have had a weak moment. Just you know, a desire like a to go see, to go to revive the career through a party. Yeah, fair enough. Just a, a um, fair enough. immature moment. Th- that's not how you revive your career. But you never know. You know, it is a, you never know. It is a, um, it hasn't happened to me that way very much. Mm. But I've had some occasions where I had something to promote and I've gone to parties mm-hmm. and, and things have happened that way a while ago. When, oh, she's doing that and, and you can create sort of a, now with social media, it's different. It's so different. I was actually bragging about, um, getting this part on Jane the Virgin yeah. and uh, talking to some friends and, and saying, you know, the, the, the most fun is when you can actually post it and, and sounds so <laughs> silly. So you get, everybody knows it so much faster than yeah. you don't have to go to a party to tell people what you're doing or you don't have to have a press release. It's, it's funny, but it does give you that instant gratification, which is what makes a social media so addictive. Yeah. I think. And, yeah. And uh, terrifying. Social media to me is also very terrifying because that is such a huge part of it is promoting what you've done. And I think what happens is that you can't help but compare yourself to other people. Oh, what are they doing? So you right. see on Twitter and on Facebook, like, oh, look at me at the Jamie Foxx party. And it's like, oh, look at her. Why aren't I at that party? You know, I'm so not in the circuit. And you kind of get insecure. Yeah, and, that's terrible. You know, I, I think it's, it breeds that. Not that everybody succumbs to it, but I think a lot of people who go on social media, it is not a positive experience. Even on, even for people not in the industry, 
I have friends who, I agree. you know, they're single and they're like, oh, my friends put all their pictures with them and their babies and it kills me. It tears me apart because huh. their life hasn't worked out that way. Right. You know, so I think it causes a kind of a lot of pain, but it is useful for that one. When you have to promote something, it is a way of getting the message out pretty fast. Uh, yes, but it um, also, some people do it more. Some people then, why didn't you take the pictures and then why didn't you exploit it more? It is a a very dangerous road to to go on if you're not aware that it, it, you don't judge the book by the cover yeah. for anybody. Well, that's right. The perception can be you see a picture of somebody who just landed a role and all you can think about it be like, oh, they got a role. Man, they're making it. And yet what they're not posting is the last 300 days that they're eating macaroni and cheese in their apartment. Right. You you don't see that no. Facebook post. Yes. Of, Here's me broke trying to pay my water bill. You know, you only see the good thing for the most part. Right. So it's a horribly distorted perception. Of course. And, horribly. and uh, the younger you are, I don't know if it has necessarily anything to do with age, but the more immature you are and the more dangerous it can be. And I feel bad for for young actors right now that that have to deal with it so much. And actually, when I was talking to my friends in the industry, some of them producers, some of them, and I said, remember when I did that, you know, when I did Awesome Powers or when I did summer school or when I was doing, I don't know, um, any work that I was proud of, mm -hmm. how much more I could have gotten, yeah. mileage I could have gotten back then. And then again, it, it wasn't that way. The most you did was send postcards to casting directors yeah. to advertise Magnificent Seven or something that I was really proud of. So it does give you perhaps a little bit more control over your career. And if you have a, if you have a business mind, yeah. which some actors are do, it, it can be helpful. Yeah. But I feel bad for, for, for young actors having to look at who got that other part and, and you see it so fast. Yeah. So the best thing is to stay away. And the comparison, not just in, in the field of entertainment, in any, yeah, in any social, yeah. you know, what are they doing, where are they living, the house, this and that. It is a very <laughs> egocentric. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious because uh, you've been always, you know, you're one of the beautiful actresses. I mean, that's part of your characteristics. Have you had a lot of situations of the casting couch thrown your way? I mean, I almost think because you're, you've been the sex bomb. Oh, so thank you. Just you just have, must have had like buckets full, I would think. I, not so much. I think, I think um, people can sense where you come from mm. and you got to sort of open that door mm. in the interaction. No one in this country would venture out so much as to get a rejection or to, or to, uh, you kind of have to open that door. It's mm. not as bad as they lead you to believe. Okay. You have to be open to that. In Italy is a little worse because just because of the nature of the country. Yeah. So it, Italy, it's a little bit, you know, in general, uh, the passion, let's put it, yeah. spin it in a positive way. They are going to be, and the the culture, it's going to be a little bit more, if I get a no, who cares? So they're going to give it a, a little bit yeah. more of a shot. I mean, it sounds like if the whole thing is knowing the director, I mean, to put it bluntly, wouldn't that be huge advantages for actresses sleeping with directors? Or having a boyfriend that's a director. Yeah, yeah. that happens a lot. Uh, politicians, um, I don't know, everybody knows about all the actors, you know, with the, with the people in the government, Berlusconi and all of that, and, and all the people that were put in the... <laughs> Does that help the, your career? Sleeping with a politician in Italy? It, there, was a lot, there were a lot of politics in the entertainment. Oh, And so wow. it did. I don't know. Good I mean, I've, I've, I, I didn't live there. But it has changed now. You know, the the it, it it has changed, and actually, there there's a lot of talent in Italy. There's a lot of great actors, sure. and and, uh, and some of the focus shifts uh, a lot on on the ability. Mm -hmm. But it is very very important to know the right people and to the the politics and the corruption is is kind of permeates business. Mm -hmm. It permeates this industry, which is again more intangible. We are not. If you're an athlete, you can't do a triple jump. You can see it. If you yes. can't score, you can see If you're an actor, you know, there can be things that can be done with editing. And, yeah, and, you know, like with singing. 
Yes, right? Yeah, fix, right. It, in, fix it in post, right? auto-tune. <laughs> exactly. So it is one of those industries that although there is so much talent and I respect it immensely that it can be, you know, it can, people can get in front of you for many different reasons. Mm. And in a country that's where the politicians are corrupt, then it trickle down to a business which is connected to politics or where, you know, yes. So having good boyfriends helped too much in that country when I was there and maybe things are changed. And mm. um, so I, every time I went back, there was some issue that uh, made me sort of uh, come back here. You mean just that you were expected to maybe do things you weren't comfortable uh, with? Or? No, 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 nothing. But 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 what you see, what around you, you. around okay. you, um, and so the odds are fe- I felt were less in my favor huh. because I'm not very good at that kind of a game. Um, nothing, You're not nothing. good at corruption. <laughs> it's not your thing. <laughs> it's not my thing. <laughs> it's not my. I'm not good at you know getting something out of something. Mm. Um, and, uh, you just want to do your work. I just want to do your work yeah. and it doesn't always work. It doesn't always, it, it's business. So it, 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 you can't just always do your work. You have to, that's why I went to the Jamie Foxx party. See, it was therapy. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, I have to make more of an effort to, to market, you know, and, and, uh, but it's worked out fine for me the way it is. It is the way it's meant to be. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And how, because you're a lifer in this. I mean, all along the way, did you ever have any other jobs or were you literally an no. actress the whole entire time? I feel very lucky, yes. Okay. I, I studied very young and I've been an actress my whole entire time. And so as, you know, like me as well, but you on a much more successful level, um, no. you've gone through working through the age brackets, right? you know, where you're, you start off and you're the girlfriend and the ingenue and the, then the leading lady. And now you're getting into, I guess, mum roles, yes. right? Yes. I'm so, proud of it. Yeah. Well, you, and you bring all the warmth and love to it because you are a real mum. So how is, how does that feel? I mean, going through those transitions and how do you feel about what's coming eventually, God willing? You know? I love what I do and I do voiceovers. I do any aspect of, of acting I love. And so I love the opportunity. When, when I f- played the first mom, which is 90210, it was the new 90210. I played uh, Navid's mom for, I did a few episodes. I did it was 10, 10 episodes. And a girlfriend of mine was my, oh, you're doing a mom now? I go, yeah, isn't that great? I was thrilled, meaning I'm transitioning into something. Mm. And that's not to say that an actress over 40 has to do just moms. There are many things. So we're kind of uh, pigeonholing a woman. But it is true. In my case, I haven't played any attorneys uh, as of late. So I'm playing some mom. So... Um, I'm happy to make that mm. that transition, and and uh, with Jane the Virgin, it's such a good premise. I don't know what they're gonna do with this character. That how are they gonna re- redeem this woman that takes ten million dollars to abandon her son? Is this your character? That's my character. Oh, wow. So it's like okay, um, wow, it's cool. That's yeah, pretty cool. It's pretty. <laughs> that, that is, I'm thinking. And of course, I have my subtext that I came up with. Um, how, why a woman would do such a thing. Yeah. And how, so that's the story. Yeah. She, uh, takes $10 million to, uh, wow. disappear and not contact her son. So that's pretty, pretty brutal. So did uh, we just give a huge spoiler? No, no, that's show? the character okay. that you've already, seen that. Okay. That's what you've seen. Uh, okay. that's when, when Justin, uh, confronts the character's okay. name, he, uh, sees, his mother again after so many years okay. because the father dies, he finds out that she tells, finally tells him that, you know, I took $10 million and I promised not to get in touch. Okay. So I had to get you out of my mouth. So that was a bad, um, bad news for, for a young man to find out that he yeah. was. Uh, so we'll see how they'll, they'll fix that one. Yeah. I have a few ideas, but you know. <laughs> and when is this show on? When can we see uh, this show? The show... My character was on one of the last episodes of the last season. Okay. The show is premiering in, in October. Okay. And so they're working on various storylines. Of course, the show ended with the child being kidnapped. 
Don't um, give it away. No, no, no. That, that ended. Might no, no, no. But what if you haven't seen it? Oh, like, I haven't seen everybody, it. Everybody, well. Total but, spoiler, Fabiana. No, no, no. Spoiler. No, big. that. that <laughs> no, the child was kidnapped at the end of the right. season one. That was it. But now I got to watch season one and now I know the kid's well, kidnapped. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to do that? No, I would have watched no. it to see you. And now I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I'm just recovering from the Jamie Foxx thing. And now I know the end of this whole season. <laughs> Ay, ay, it's ay. like we keep resetting the whole friendship. <laughs> I keep disappointing you, <laughs> but you make me want to be a better woman. <laughs> <laughs> and what network is this show? Uh, the WB. WB. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And the comedy, I mean, you've done like this huge body of comedy, all these sitcoms you've been on. I was just curious. Oh, by the way, because um, you were on Full House. I was. Yeah. And John Stamos, you were just saying how you're going into playing mums and stuff. I just saw a billboard today on my way to your house, and I guess he's playing a grandfather. Oh, really? Yeah, the show, it, it was a big John Stamos holding a baby, and it just said grandfathered. Oh, so. because they're doing the full house? Are they doing it again? So maybe he must be a grandfather now. He must be a grandfather, at least in the... Yes, because he had the twins. Were those his... Olsen awesome. twins. I don't yeah, know if they, I don't they, think were, they were They his. were his... Yeah, that's true. No. I'm getting confused. But, but um, yes, I kissed him. Oh, did you? Uh, back then. <gasps> He's a nice guy. He was, and I forgot the kiss. Can you believe it? You My forgot man? it? Yes, I forgot how the kiss was. <laughs> no offense, John Stamos. <laughs> Not forgot. a memorable kiss, but maybe oh, that's no, no, good. no, 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 I just, you forget. You, you know, maybe it was too memorable and I had to sort of I think erase. you only remember the bad kisses. Like, seriously, see? I think it's a compliment. If you can't remember the kiss... Because it was so was good. good, I had it's to forget it, otherwise my life would have been ruined. All I could think of was kissing him again. I, so I <laughs> had one bad kiss, and that's what I remember in my whole life. I remember some guy kissing me with such vigor and strength. It was like he was trying to join our faces, and it was painful. That's like awful. So, he was so painful, and it hurt, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. With, with this the tongue? was real. Um, it was more like mouth muscles oh just pushing oh it was so, the opposite of gentle and so oh, but, e- but any any other kisses i don't remember did you so tell him good I, d- I just think i didn't go on another date oh, i would think yeah not. he remember was italian you... oh man he was italian you know oh, that, 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 that was a, a blow <laughs> <See> the... <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> italian american or italian italian he was Italian Canadian. I was in Canada hmm. at the time, so yeah. This yeah, is many I always years complained ago. about the French claiming uh, ownership of the French kiss. What's up with that? I mean, what about Italians? The, you know, why the French kiss is the perfect kiss? Don't, so, it, don't Italians just go for the main act? Is that what? It, like, <laughs> no, I Italians don't think are of, very good at courting. I think I don't think of Italians and kissing. I'm like they're right to the main attraction. No, no, no. They're very good at courting. They're, okay. you know, they're well taken care of with, uh, uh, from their mothers. So they learn good manners. I don't know if I, they can, I don't know if I've, once they've obtained what, what, I don't know if they keep up the, the gallantry, but they are nice. And even mm. now when I go back to Italy, you know, it's, it's a better place mm. for a woman than, than Los Angeles really. Well, I want to get back to your John Stamos kiss. I, the kisses, yeah. I think <laughs> this is important uh, politically. I think this is, <laughs> we need to speak about this. Well, we can explore. talk about kisses. Who else did I kiss? Uh, who, else did every, kiss? who else did I kiss? I, David Hasselhoff. Whoa. I remember that kiss because, uh, well, I know. it was very. He's very popular in Europe. Yeah, I, I mean, know. He's enormous in Germany. I know. And he has a singing career over there that's giant, yes, right? That yes. we don't even know about in America, in but he's too. a pop star in, in I Germany. was so proud of my NYPD Blue guest shot, and, but all they could talk about, my friends, and it was uh, Baywatch. Right. It's a big deal. Uh, yeah, Baywatch. Uh, so. so how is he with the kiss? You know why I remember that kiss? Because I had it on my reel. Okay. See how this is about, see, it's, that just shows you that when you're kissing on stage, you're really thinking it's more work. But it was on my reel and, and we looked so good because the lighting was so good on that show that I remember it uh, fondly. So on set, I had to kiss Ian Ogilvy, who, uh-huh. who was the saint, and I had to kiss him in Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. So I remember that very well. And it was all very comfortable and everything. When you kissed David Hasselhoff and John Stamos, did you kind of have a little bit of polite banter first to kind of get you guys a little c- accustomed, or do you just literally go on set? Oh, you mean and rehearse give him a kiss? it? Yeah, like you know, because sometimes, because it is, you know, I think it's always that little tiny bit of okay. Well, now we're gonna kiss, and I just met you. So, did did either of those guys do anything to make you feel more comfortable, no. like a little joke or anything, or they just? 
I guess they... No, we just did it. They just did it. And I was comfortable with okay, you. Were yeah, I'm very method. Yes, okay. I was in character. All right. <laughs> it Fine. wasn't hard when you have okay. the easy on the eyes. Let me think. I had to kiss some people that were not that attractive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Should we was... mention names? No, I, don't I, know. I guess I said myself, I can't. <laughs> I can't. That's it. See? Not Everybody's politi- going to be on your IMDb now. <laughs> I'm looking. not politically correct. I right. Can't, I can't say it. I was almost going to say it. See how truthful I am? Yeah, yeah, you're very truthful. Very dangerous. Okay, so you kiss people who aren't unattractive, but they were good kisses, clearly. They were okay. It was okay. You know, you're in character. I'm very giving. Okay. (laughs) I mean, gosh, let's see. You you did, well, you were on Cheers. I mean, you've done these legendary comedies like Cheers. What kind of stuff did you do on Cheers? So cute. Um, Yeah, that was a show where you learned a lot. Um, The director, the actors. I was... uh, actually playing a maid and the character was supposed to be played by John Cleese. It was a character that he was supposed to come oh, back and do. Wow. And then uh, he didn't do it, but uh, the actor that, that did it was just as masterful. And so it was about this older guy sort of a sex addict coming on to the the maid the maid right. sort of uh, naive. Okay. And so then when um uh, his wife came or somebody, some, somebody comes, he, he hides everybody in the closet Wow! because he was, yeah. So you just I'm, have no sense of spoilers, do you? Oh, you, oh, <laughs> we all hide in the closet, but I was, so I was in the closet with Ted Danson with, who was it? Myself. And who else was in the closet? If, uh, maybe just I think half of Hollywood. Can I just say? Ted, in no, that, that, that was funny. That closet. Ted Danson was funny. Totally he, over Fabiana. Uh, that what? totally went over her head. God. Oh, no, yeah, I was thinking about Ted dancing in the closet. Sorry. It's, it's a language thing, you see. No, 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 no. I was focusing on, I was trying to remember that closet experience. I'm spent. just going to talk with you guys now. Well, we'll have two conversations. <laughs> talk about the closet. <laughs> so the closet. <laughs> so, what did you say? Why, why did I not pay attention? Uh, oh, no, no, no. You, t- it was, uh, I was you thinking were, about you the were closet. paying full attention. No, it's probably a language thing because you said uh, who else was in the closet and I said half of Hollywood. <gasps> oh, that's funny. Now she gets it. That See, got you it. get a delayed reaction. <laughs> you got to slow it down for me, girl. Okay. <laughs> well, I realize when you've got four and a bit languages. No, a lot no, no. It's because I was very focused on yeah, the closet well, you're, thing. You're focused. I'm yeah. focused. And so, um, Ted I'm Danson. I'm like a man, one I'm, thing at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <gasps> Ted Danson. I mean, what was he like on set? Because he's another one of these just phenomenal talents. I've never ever heard anything bad about no, Ted Danson. No, I, I wouldn't think, right? Complete gentleman. Class act, right? Class act. Yeah. And I lived in Malibu for a while. I ran into him over there for a while. Um, yes, a complete, smart, intelligent class act. So hmm. was Mark Harmon. Right. Cutie pie at the time. Okay. I, I, now I was so young, I didn't uh, realize how gorgeous he was. Uh, uh, he still is. But, you know, and when we did summer school, he certainly... And yeah. Did you have a crush on him? No, I was in love at the time. Okay. So I think I didn't see, I'm very loyal. And yeah. <laughs> so I was in love at the time. <laughs> so I didn't realize, my goodness. And I think he also he was already married. Or, okay. uh, so Do you have a crush on him now? Right? And I, could, uh, I had a crush on him Sensing. that I didn't get. Do, uh, it's I'm sort of re- Yes. Regret. Why it's like I a re- latent crush that's yes. emerging. Wow. Yes. Right. right. <laughs> like the- do you ever have that? Like, have you done r- shows where you're working with people that you see, you have to be all professional, but you secretly have a crush on them? I may have. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and maybe I was also involved at them. So it was like okay. a complete fantasy. Oh, got it. I may have. Whoa. Okay. I may have. Right. Right. And did you ever get to date anyone that you had worked with or did you ever want to, like, you know, did that ever pan out that you did a show and then you ended up being a couple with somebody? Well, I married someone that, that, you worked uh, with? that I worked with. Okay. Uh, my first husband was in the soap opera with me. So, okay. yes. Which soap opera uh, is One it? Life to Live. One Life to Live. So we were on that together, and um, but we never had any scenes we met on the soap together where we kissed or where we had any romantic interaction on the set. It's just that's how I met him. Uh, and, and then I ended up marrying him. So mm. uh, wonderful, wonderful person mm. and actor. Yes. And then you got divorced. And then I got divorced. But got still married. we were together f- <laughs> for 10 years. Yeah, that's a yeah. Long time. I think you were recently divorced. When, when I, I met, met you, right? Yes. Yeah, but you always right. spoke very fondly yes. of him, which yes. is very nice. Yes. Our Oakwood days. Wow. My goodness. Oh, right? I know. So far. Were you with me the night that we went to Wilt Chamberlain's house? 
Yes. Yeah. And we, with Natasha. Yes. And can you believe what we go to Wilt Chamberlain's house and I'll just say absolute oh. gentleman, like no, total gentleman. Cause I think he was Natasha's godfather, but we took our photos on his bed cause we were so, we were so innocent. It's like, Oh, well, he's got this reputation of sleeping with over 2000 women. We got to have our picture on his bed. Well, am I on that picture? Yeah. Yeah. There's a picture of all three of us and he, he one I was room, there too. one you room think- was a bed. Remember it was yeah, a circular round, room. Yes, I do remember. And you just went in and you step on the bed. Like you just entering the room, you're on the bed. There's no other way but bed. Oh my god. And goodness. we took our picture, you, me, and Natasha. And I think we even tried to dress the same in like matching outfits and stuff. We were like Charlie's Angels. And I was whichever, always always the unpopular one. Always oh, had to be Sabrina. Oh, I think you enjoy the self-deprecating <laughs> thing. I think, you know, I think we were both wonderful and I can't believe that. that uh, That's was, a long time ago. It was the time probably. We wouldn't probably do it now, no matter what age, because we know that there could be, it wasn't that easy to publish things. Well, you it did. was harmless because we were seriously, oh, I mean, I think he was her godfather. And that guy. <laughs> I don't Wilt, want to go there. Wilt, but I think he was. <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain was so lovely. You talk about business mind. I had, because I have had businesses since I was a kid with my painting and stuff. And I had a chat, a long chat with Wilt Chamberlain and he owned a ton of restaurants. Oh. So he, I'm talking to this sports legend and he's like giving me tips on how you might set up a restaurant chain. But such a lovely guy. And you know, as a woman, I can say when you meet a guy, you feel a vibe. You always feel a vibe on if they're giving off something that they're fully professional or they're not. Yes. They're giving a little vibe that maybe they're putting it out there that they would be willing for something if you were willing. Yes. And here's, t- yeah. And here's this guy who's got this reputation of the world's biggest ladies man. Nothing. No vibe. So classy and gentlemanly. And so Yeah, I don't have any bad memories. No. See? Never judge the book by the cover. I mean, you make me think of uh, my days at the Playboy Mansion, you know, and uh, when I first went there, I remember Hugh Hefner had just gotten divorced and he just opened it up. So it must have been 1998. Okay. Uh, and and uh, Austin Powers had just come out. So I go there for the first time and they introduce me to him. And so I'm there the play- and I heard all these things and I want to see what goes on yeah and so no there, there's the cave yeah the grotto the grotto and the cave yeah the grotto yeah. and i said i want to go there so i think i'm thinking i'm going to see these things going on i go there and just a couple of people naked and i said well okay we did that in europe in the 80s topless yeah, that's beach right. you know it's not a big deal to me and then they were just kissing nothing much i never i never i think it's also what you get yourself into and a lot of people are not going to, you, you know, you, you have to open the door. We talked about that before, the casting couch. Is yeah. What you, it's a vibe you're putting vibe. off that yes. it's allowable yes. Yes. in a lot of cases. Yes. So, I mean, I've been put in positions where there's definitely no way I was giving off a vibe and I have turned down oh, really? Yeah, what's been offered and it's been, you know, not a good situation. Uncomfortable, like oh, aggressive. And, and also cost me like a role in a show uh-huh. for not moving uh, forward, you know, that kind of stuff. But in, in the States or in Canada? That was in Canada, but okay. for an American show, which was a big deal in Canada. Of course. Um, but, uh, you know, as you, as you get older, I think it happens less, uh, you know, because you're giving off a more confident vibe. Mm-hmm. The trouble is when you first come to L.A., it's like everybody you meet is a potential connection and you're programmed you got to be nice to everybody because they could help you get a job. Yes. And there's such a fine line between being polite and kind of watching you don't get taken advantage of, which I was aware You're of right. being British because I was so programmed to be polite always. Yes, don't, yes. You don't shout and you don't swear and you don't oh, tell right. people to get lost. You don't do that, you know. And you're right. So I think I think um, I got married really young, mm. and that protected me from a lot of um, of situations, of situations yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was married. Yeah. Even though it was a puppy love, you know, we were both young and then 20 to 30, being married from 20 to 30 sort of um, protected me from many situations that maybe could have come my way. Well, that's good. You have to let, you have to go out at night by yourself a little bit more in order to let that happen. Right, right. So if you keep it so professional, for the better or worse... uh, 
When you were at the Playboy Mansion, do you remember what party it was? Because they have themed parties yes. there, like the Midsummer Night's Dream. You were there too, right? What? Well, I used to go to the Playboy Mansion a lot because I was designing okay. shoes for Playboy. I didn't want to, I, I whispered it like it's nobody's so going to hear I if love, I whisper. <laughs> but I love that you think nobody would hear right, that. Because... That's like so adorable. She whispers it in the microphone. <laughs> you were there too. That's actually funny. It's in very that. funny. <laughs> I, I, I was hoping to put because I didn't want to say it. Just because, did it again. You, can, you can you can cut it out, you know. Yeah, whatever. I could if I wanted to. But you, I won't. No, okay. You were there too. Yeah, so I was yes. there a whole bunch. I yes, went yes, to, yes. I went to the whole scheme of things because I was for eight years. I was designing shoes and I would deliver shoes to the playmates, all the bunnies and everything. It's a shame we weren't there at the same time. That would have been fun. I went there a lot for a while. They have the uh, because it was fun and because believe it or not. Uh, there would be a lot of people. So if I were doing something new, like a new show, I remember I was ju- I was doing Magnificent Seven, mm. which is a show that I loved. Mm. Uh, I did a few episodes of that and I was so happy. And then they had the Midsummer's Night Dream Party and I mm. went, oh, the pyjama party? When was that? The one with everybody wore pyjamas? Oh, the Midsummer Night's Dream Party, everybody wore. Oh, with wears. the pyjamas. Yeah. So I went there and then I was so happy that I could promote. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah you got, got a show. Yeah. And I said it to a lot of people. And I remember how I got then another recurring role on a, on a minor show called, a different show called uh, Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. I did a recurring on that, not the best work that I've done, of course, but it's work. Mm-hmm. And uh, the producer was there. So he said, oh, and then I remember getting that offer. So I don't know if it was connected, oh, but sure. you know, so one of the of course things, it helps. Yeah, it to helps network. to yeah. you know that I was working, that I was, and then yeah, that's great. And what I did is I went there only a couple of hours and then left. You know, you don't wait. Well, too long. here's the thing: what time did you leave? Is Which, that it? Yeah, yes. there's a witching hour yes. at the Playboy Mansion. I'm sure it was. And I used to go Good a lot, you. and only one time. I stayed after the witching ah, hour. What is like 12, 30 About maybe. 12 o'clock. Yes, and yes. then or, or it was a very different party yes. after that. Were you, did you ever stay past no. midnight? Okay. Like the bowls of condoms appear oh, in no, the restrooms. Not see, I did not see yeah. that, that. And then there's like, there's people engaged in activities. Okay. And, but uh, only if you go up to the uh, higher this was, rooms, well, or? this was by the grotto, like all around oh, the I did not see that. By the grotto then again, I'm stone. nearsighted. I wonder if it was a sight. It's probably your sight. <laughs> you know, there's probably quite seedy things were going on around and you. I didn't see and anything. You were busy talking to this producer and telling him about your job. Very focused. Uh, yeah, I think we've established uh, that. <laughs> no, no, I, I did leave early. Yes, yeah, before yeah. you can tell, you know, people get drink too much. So I had my fun. You see all of the people that, um, yes, actors, celebrity, <laughs> you see all of them, you know. Yeah. And a lot of, at the time, a lot of people would show up that you wouldn't expect. I remember seeing Kevin Spacey there. Yeah. Um, and uh, so just to mention a name, a lot of people, just to mention a name that you wouldn't expect. There. Yeah. Um, so just a lot. And it was fun, people watching. And of course, you know, you dress yourself up, but there's no competition because at the time they had the uh, the ladies with the body paint. Yes, I, yes. Completely naked. So, okay. Yeah. No, no, your ego, check your ego at the door. Nobody's right. going to look too much. So that's good. So it's, you know, it's, Well, here's the thing. See, you probably didn't have to go through this because you were a star in a movie. I was a shoe designer. So I had to submit a photograph to be vetted, to they, be allowed to go to the party. They did, he, uh, Hugh Hefner did that with, with everybody. Yeah. He, you know, I don't, he, the first time I went, they did take a picture. And of me. they look at you and check that. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I just know well, that. I mean, they're looking and they, they want people in the, because you have to wear all the lingerie and stuff at the Midsummer Night's Dream Party. You, have you to can be, go dress however well, you 90s, want. Well, 90s, but I mean, who's going to wear it? You're not going to go to... You know, I think I actually... And Taylor's loft. Wait, wait, wait. Something. I got some checkered pyjamas. I wanted to... Oh, you wore cutesy stuff, not sexy stuff? That day I wore cutesy stuff. Because you know what? I did the sexy stuff and I got so little attention. I remember when I was dressed as a mummy, it was a Halloween party. Mummy rings a bell. Mummy, how much work I put into that. I, uh, the bandages, you okay. know, I, and I was letting a lot of skin show. It was okay. actually so much work. And it was a great outfit. Nobody paid much attention. Okay. And then I wore the same outfit a year later at, a, at a, a regular party, like a Malibu party, a nice party. And it was like the hit of the party. Mm. So I realized, you know, just... So I put a little cute pyjama with the checkers, you know, like... Uh, you don't have to wear... But were they short? 
pajamas. Yeah. So you still showed your legs. So you're bit. still sexy. So this is bullshit that you're saying. You played yourself down and no, you're that's showing true. your and fabulous legs. And then I also legs. had lingerie underneath the pyjama in the front. Okay. But that's all. But it wasn't, <laughs> but it wasn't like the nighty, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I did. It was short. It was everything but see-through, basically. It, well. it, it checked all the boxes, except it was see-through. Yes, it was, was kind of like, you know, like fake saddle. It I'm was gonna busty. Be, yeah, it was, it was fake. I was faking like I'm going to be an intellectual, but I was actually right. yeah, be, trying to be more sexy than Got the it. obvious sexy. Well, you are sexy. So manipulative. How can you not be sexy? It was so manipulative. It was awful. Right. I, regret, I, I, I apologize for that one, too. I'm a po- this is <laughs> and I wasn't even there. And yeah, I'm apologizing. apologizing. Yes, yes, I'm Catholic. I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. I had, I just have this uh, like thing that happened at the Playboy Mansion that I just think is kind of fun that Hugh Hefner had uh, this son. I think he has two boys. Well, they won't be boys oh. anymore. But one of his sons was 13 and he was at the party oh. and they're very adult parties. And so I was surprised this young man was walking around in a lovely suit, looking like a mini mob boss, literally, <laughs> really well dressed. And he was a lovely kid. And I don't remember his name, but he came up. And I guess I was sort of by myself because, I mean, I wasn't here. I'm a shoe designer, not like a famous celebrity. And he came up and he grabbed my hand and he goes, oh, you're really tall. Are you with somebody here? And I was like, oh, no, I'm not. Keep in mind, this is a child. And he goes, oh, I'm going to introduce you to someone. You'll really like him. He's really tall. And he dragged me over to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, that's funny. And he introduces me just like, she's tall. Tall people get along. I guess that's how you think of it how when you're cute. a kid, you know. So he's playing matchmaker based on my height in my How shoes, did that you know? work out? I guess I had a chat with, uh, but I don't know a lot about sports at all. Right? What are like, you going to say to Karina? I know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost thinking, oh, which sport is he? Oh, no. Yeah, but but like, the height <laughs> gave it away, I guess. So, <laughs> but I'm not a sporty person, but. Well, I way deviated off my, my question to do with you on the sitcoms. I just was wondering, because oh. you did Full House, Designing Women, Cheers... You done the mad about wedding, you mad about you, and I just wondered if there were certain people who stood out to you for any particular reasons, whether they were super nice or just they had such great chops, or you learned from them such a lot. Mad about you was a good sitcom to be a Paul Reiser and uh, of course Ellen Hunt, and because I did a few and I had met him before on something, and uh, I didn't get the part because I was too young, but uh, I was very disappointed. But they actually made a point telling my agents that I was really good and I, I remember that and so when I auditioned again that we remember that episode and so that that was another great set the writing creative good acting every sitcom I mean even Wings was a very very good experience because I was playing the Italian cousin of Tony Sh- oh, I forget his last name you know the he's a great actor and he was really really great I kissed him too. I had to kiss him. I think we Jesus, were, I didn't you kiss? <laughs> and uh, yeah, we uh, very, very, very sweet experience. Um, Did you work with Matthew McConaughey on the wedding planner? Were you in scenes with him? At no. All? Oh okay. goodness. Oh no. Would have been nice. Yeah. Did <laughs> See, you go to the wanna... rap party? <laughs> uh, no, I was not in town. I did not. Okay. Go, yeah, I was not in town for that. Yes, see, that's one of those late crashes that I should have had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Imagine if you kept in touch. Yes, that's right. Imagine if you kept so, in touch. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Well, it's been awesome chatting with you and reconnecting with you after so many years. And you still look the same. Well, you do too. And you're... I think we look hot. I think you look hot and no. I look like, I don't know, like I've no. been, I get, I get sub insults about my appearance. I talked to somebody the other day and she's like, you're so practical in your appearance. Miss Gray, you are playing off this uh, self-deprecating thing. It's not <laughs> flying well. You're gorgeous. You've always been, uh-huh. you're so talented. You do so many things. I mean, all of your multitasking multi-talents and uh she's reading off the script right now, no right? no this is coming from the heart ah, yes thank yes you. yes well, thanks, and so that. yeah inspiring truly truly inspiring lady well well thank you very much for saying that thank you for being here and, and sharing about your life and we're going to look for you on jane the virgin hopefully again in the future now we know the whole freaking ending of the first season <laughs> ruined can i just yeah, yeah. say um 
I will let the Jamie Foxx thing slide and we'll start from ground zero again on our nice. friendship. Nice. Yeah, so we've healed a rift here <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and we'll see you on social media. So we can all just like uh, make each other feel awful. Uh, what's your Twitter handle? Is it Fabiana? I don't have a Twitter You're not thing. on Twitter? Can you believe it? You're not on Twitter. No, I'm not very hip. I'm well, not very I thought hip. this was the whole thing. You said you've got to get into this stuff. I thought Facebook was social media. No, not so do you, where do people find out and get in touch with oh, you? I have they the want? Facebook thing. Okay, is it personal or a page? Both. Okay, um, and it's I just said, your, your name? Facebook posts are always very, very funny. Oh, thanks. Yes, yes. Mine's just a personal page. Oh, I'm, is it personal? Yeah, I mean. It's people can befriend me. I've got it's all comedians on it. Like tons I am of glad you didn't comedians. because of, after the uh, the Jamie Fox, I didn't. You didn't defriend me, so you were nice enough not to defriend me. I've got I'm, a big heart. <laughs> I think we've established. I Thank can you. handle some big disappointments. Thank you for and some not defending blows. me. Right. I'm <laughs> See, I didn't know we were not friends because you didn't defend me. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I, I'm going to release you to go and do your motherly and, and actressy duties. And this has been awesome. And I hope we connect again sooner than decades. And this is Fabiana Udenio. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> There you go. Juicy, right? That did not disappoint. Am I correct? A friendship salvaged at the Grey Escape. Celebrity kissing techniques outed. We cover it all. For images, check out thegreyescape.com. And for all sorts of stuff on me, including this podcast, visit nataliegray.com. Thank you, Fabiana. Thank you, Rosie. And thank you, you who's listening right now, you are a very important part of this equation because this situation that's happening right now would not be the same without you. What would be happening if you weren't listening? A little part of my life, approximately 90 minutes or two decades, depending on how you look at things, a little part of my life is now a little part of your life. Thank you for listening. Bonus magical happenings will occur in your life if you help spread the word on this show. I promise. Because I am magic. Seriously, I have a dog and there is no way he would be so happy to see me if I was not extremely magical. Much love and warm wishes going out to you from me and my dog. And I'll catch you next time on The Grey Escape. Yeah, baby! Thank you.